Greetings, operatives. I am Agent 3540, and this morning, we're playing a new game. We're going to start Sherlock Holmes The Awakened. We're also playing some Tug of War with Bear. I always thought those bikes were so funny looking. Shadow over London. Dr. Watson, would you kindly close the door behind you so that we can limit the price of your carelessness to merely hours of work rather than days? My apologies, Mr. Holmes. I found myself rather taken aback. <laughs> I saw tidy houses in war-torn Afghanistan. Are those my surgical needles? I ran out of tax and the matter required immediate attention. <laughs> was that my supper? Plainly not, for I was the one who ate it. Hmm, I set it aside for this evening. And for that, I am grateful. Is that my bed? Watson, since you've proven yourself a master of observation, might I ask you to apply Why your skills to a on more the pertinent question? Namely, the whereabouts of today's newspapers. They are the key to everything. The newsboy is usually reliable. Medically speaking, I often find that the key to everything is good sleep. In a bed. Your papers are here, on the table. Uh, alright. Move around, interact with objects. Tensions between England and Sweden are running high after ser a series of unfortunate mishaps during recent visit to London by Swedish Prince Hildur. Chief among the, uh, the scandal was the embarrassment of the British diplomatic corps as a result of the unexplained disappearance of Princess Builder's personal bodyguard, the longtime member of her inner circle, took the opportunity to explore London while off duty and never returned. Oh no. The spokesman for the police assures the advisor they are confident the bodyguard will be located, as he is a striking representative of the Scandinavian people. A man that like that gets noticed, whether by his peers at a gentleman's club or the fair nightingales who comfort them. Local gossip, huh. all of it uninteresting. Well, interesting. Your order from Barnes' bookshop has arrived, Doctor. Barnes insists on delivering the books to our door, even though we could easily walk Another to letter shop. from Werner. That's good service. They never reply, but they keep coming. Who's Werner? Yeah, that was kind of neat. You just look at the stuff. I don't yeah. see the strand. Where is it? Pardon me? I am on the precipice of uncovering a pattern of crime across London spanning many months and involving many men. The missing paper cannot there be... There is so many That's morning. preposterous. My dear fellow, life is infinitely stranger than anything which the mind of man can invent. That's well, true. Well, life used your newspaper to wipe its posterior, so after that unpleasant discovery this morning, I disposed of it. But in lieu of the strand, perhaps I can deliver you something equally tantalizing. I have just returned from a patient of mine, Captain Stemwick. Who? No, no, that will not do. Grab your coat, Dr. Watson. Let us hope nobody has collected the dustbin. <laughs> Let's go, shall we? Are we going into these other rooms? It does not appear so. The dustbin is yours for the digging, Mr. Holmes. You. You were mistaken, Dr. Watson. The paper was indeed dirtied, but not how you implied. It's potting soil. A cactus spine. If it gets in your skin, huh. it's awfully tricky to remove, and when laced with poison, the perfect assassination tool. Perfect assassination See, Watson, tool. The conspiracy is real. Someone tried to poison me. Poison? You? That's madness. Do Why would anybody poison him? That would want to kill you? Okay, perhaps from Cordona. How about that Vogel fellow? He seems rather obsessed with you. Would he do something like this? Why go through all this scheming to murder you? A spine stuck to the newspaper is hardly lethal. 
A ruined newspaper is hardly the end of the world. We can always buy another. All right. Get the strand. Get your copy of the strand here. Oh. Sorry, Mr. Holmes. I just sold my last paper. Wait, but you Lost. were just. Well, then why are you still here? It was just Boss calling. pays by the hour. No sense in returning early. Smart kid. Any breaking news today? The dock accident. It's the talk of the town. Yes, yes. Besides the tripe on the front page, anything about burglaries? I'm not sure, sir. You're a bright child. I presume you see everything that goes on around here? Nothing gets past me, mister. Then tell me, did you notice anyone suspicious at my door this morning? Hmm. Like the man with your newspaper? Precisely. <laughs> what do you know? I know the value of a shilling. Dr. Watson. Cool. Now I can take the day off. Uh, what did he do to the paper? Did you see what he was up to? Nah, not really. I saw him approaching your house, but I had a customer. Then there's a loud bang. I ducked down. Not because I was scared, because I wasn't. I had <laughs> to protect the merchandise. Yeah. And all I could see was him kneeling at your door. Can you describe the man you saw? He was carrying a lot of books. Up to his chin, they were. Never heard of a well-read assassin. Looks can deceive. Hence the appeal of disguises. Which way did he go? Not sure. I was distracted by customers. I thought nothing Sorry. got past you, kid. All right. You earned your shilling. That'll be all. Thanks, Mr. Holmes. Maybe I could be your eyes and ears. If you have more shillings. If we do. So Wasn't that Mr. Holmes murder? Yes, Barnes has his quirks, but he also has his scruples. Not every pawn knows it's part of a game. A ruined newspaper is hardly the end of the world. We can always buy another. Effects of overwork. Newspaper ink, sus. He's heavily on right leg, sore left leg. Okay. This is interesting. Wants to look taller. Mr. Barn, I feel like you might be threatened by somebody. Mr. Barnes, a word. Interesting. Oh, for goodness sake. He just ran away. Who, uh, who goes there? Sherlock Holmes. Now will you please... Mr. Holmes. Sorry, I did not see you coming. Would you care to answer some questions for me? Well, I wish I could, but I am... Deep in the weeds with work. How about we uh, reschedule in a month or two? Come now, Mr. Barnes. It will only take a moment. Yo, Shadow. Really deep in the weeds with, uh, with important things. Well, help yourself to any book. Just take it to pay later. I trust you, Mr. Holmes. Barnes Sus. doesn't seem like himself. Why is he acting this way? You're asking the right questions, Doctor. Let's find a way to coax him out. You just set the shop on fire. That'd probably coax him out. The ladder is broken recently, judging by the freshness of the wood. That'd be how he hurt his knee. So, Barnes has a dog now. Who's a good boy? Barnes has always been a little odd, but this is uncharacteristic even for him. He just straight left the dog. Exotic Plants Catalog, a catalog of exotic plants on Barnes Counter. The name of the catalog reads Everlasting Plants for an Everlasting Love. Basics of Cryptoanalysis, Cryptography in Egypt. 
Piers Barnes has an interesting hobby. Uh, this came out earlier this year, I think. I, uh, I haven't played any of their others. Improvised stand, but it does but this make one seemed interesting. Visible. And I was looking for stuff to play. In the language of Mycroft's secret agents, it's a sign. Dried flowers are replaced when the job is done. I wonder who the recipient is. Finest view London has to offer. Encouraging people to stop and smell the roses. Our national emblem. God save the Queen. It must take patience and care to produce a bloom so beautiful. I imagine so. I merely sell them. Familiar is that spine? Our cactus? What I found in my dustbin. It is our cactus. Familiar spine? It's what I found in my dustbin. Familiar spine? It's what I found in my dustbin. is damaged. The blow was severe, but softened by something. The newspaper? It's hey, not actually a plot against fancy, us, Mr. huh? Holmes. For beauty or concealment? Distant look. Avoid eye contact. Or distract. Morning brooch, honoring deceased husband. Okay. Unusual for work attire. Clean boots. I am all up in people's faces. I think she's still grieving, yeah? Thank you for the lurk, Carly. My condolences, Mrs. Fleming. Mr. Holmes? Your husband's death. You're clearly still in mourning. Oh, no. I loved him more than anything, of course, but that was some time ago now. Life goes on. A lesson we all learn, one way or another. Are you familiar with Mr. Barnes? Yes. No, not really. Well, in a way. What on earth does that mean? <laughs> I know who he is, of course. But we haven't shared much more than a look. A look? Yes. Each morning I go for a walk in the park with slick. my dog. And most days I spot Mr. Barnes there with his new puppy. So we see each other. Actually, we once met briefly while our dogs played. He was quiet and seemed unsteady as he approached. But since then... We've never spoken. I often see him staring through the shop window. Sometimes I wonder what he thinks about that would edge such longing onto his face. Uh-oh. One of these things is not like the other. Come again? The cactus. Those fearsome spines can prove a devil to remove. And the sap is often toxic. And a rose thorn can give you tetanus, but we still grow them. The cactus seems comparatively harmless. Though you have me thinking it must be valuable. I was under the impression that you knew its price already. <laughs> Your guess is as good as mine. The first time I saw this cactus was when I came back from my break. What do you make of the flowers in Barnes' shop window? Well, they could use a bit of water. Do they mean anything to you? Mean anything how? 
I'm not sure I'd follow Mr. Not Holmes. sure I'd Why follow. do you think they're there? Are you suggesting the flowers are for me? It seems likely, does it not? Oh, I hope you're right. displays a bouquet of dead flowers to attract the attention of Miss Fleming, of course. You may hope she will come into his shop and give him watering advice, or it simply could be a symbol of his desperation. Barnes anonymously gifted her with a cactus, which he ordered from the catalog on his counter. A questionable choice for Barnes, a symbol of his eternal love, since the catalog presents these cacti as immortal. Plainly, this is the same cactus he dropped outside on the strand. Uh... I hear the full story. So hmm. now we can go back and talk. I to him. Uh, think perhaps I have been chasing oh. shadows. I think you have. Do not despair, Mr. Holmes. Even the best of us make mistakes. We better tell Mr. Barnes what we've learned. Mr. Barnes, I know what you did, and I know why you did it. I'm sorry, Mr. Holmes. I can't hear you very well from behind the door. <laughs> We're gonna kick in the door. You ordered a cactus from the plant catalog and then left it for Mrs. Fleming as a gift. You place flowers in the window to get her attention and wear high heels to appear taller and more desirable. You are her secret admirer. <laughs> I couldn't read this morning's edition of The Strand because it was covered in soil and spines. I know you dropped a cactus on it and then fled. Barnes? It's Dr. Watson. Rest assured, we are not interested in disclosing your personal affairs to anyone, including Mrs. Fleming. Didn't we already? Please come out. Uh, I think we right already then. kind of pointed it out to her. So, you know what happened then? I was on my way back from the post office, having picked up the cactus and some books. It was quite an awkward package, heavy too. And when I got to your door, I dropped the cactus in your paper. Forgive me. I needed that paper to prove a theory and prevent a crime. Your actions were rather disruptive. Your clumsiness carrying the post is matched only by the clumsiness of your romantic gesture. Oh, it's true. I am useless for this sort of thing. I'm not even sure if Mrs. Fleming noticed. We help him out. As in out. most things in life, truth is the answer. Cease with the obtruse signals and anonymous gifts and simply talk to the woman. Yo, what is the worst Deegan. that can happen? She rejects you and you, you are look. freed from this endless purgatory. That... Yes, you are correct, of course. I do have a slight tendency to overthink things. Thank you. So, at last, we return to the matter of the paper. I'm investigating a string of burglaries. Did you perhaps read of any before the edition was spoiled? I don't recall, but you're welcome to read our copy for yourself. You had an issue of the Strand here all along? Well, naturally. I am a bookseller. I have a subscription naturally. to every magazine and newspaper in London. So you every ought to be familiar with newspaper. the concept of burying the lead. I... Oh no, uh, my apologies, Mr. Holmes. I'll make it up to you however I can. I am an expert on obscure languages and translation and and uh, yes yes okay just give me the paper huh. saltpeter explosion rocks docks locals at the port of london had a rude awakening last night with a loud bang and thick red smoke disturbing the peace merchant ship moskva had docked at pier number th pier n3 in the early evening en route to Europe and was rocked by several concussive explosions. The port authorities yet to comment on the incident, and it is unknown if the crew members were aboard at the time. Witness reports seeing saltpeter leaking into the river, but with the area still off limits to workers and the public, it may be some time before we have a full account of what Come, transpired. Dr. Watson. Let us put this matter behind us. Farewell, Mr. Barnes. I hope to hear good news about you and Mrs. Fleming. 
let me know if there's any way I can make it up Good to luck. you. I'll tell you what, tomorrow's edition of The Strand is on me. I'm sure Barnes has had enough of our meddling, Mr. Holmes. We'd best be off. Well, that was an utter waste of time. A waste of time. An assassination did seem rather unlikely. There was supposed to be another burglary. I was certain of it. Hmm. Mm. Something you wish to say, Doctor? You can be no? certain and wrong. Well, only that you have a remarkable faculty for deduction and pattern recognition. And that perhaps, if ill-applied, I see things that are not there. Yes. It is London. There will always be burglaries. It doesn't have to mean anything. It could so mean it something. Seems. Forgive me. Without something to occupy my mind, I turn into an entirely different animal. Which brings us back to my news from earlier. I think I have a case for you, a real one. Truly? Indeed. Though perhaps not as thrilling as your stories from Cordona. A patient of mine, Captain Stenwick, told me that his servant disappeared. I said I knew just the man to help. What do you say? Oh, Watson. Yes, I know it's not the most tantalizing mystery nor the story to launch my writing career, but it's brilliant. Let's go. Oh, good. Onward. Well, his house is nearby. Come. <laughs>